morning, everyone. My name is Marta Larmizo. I'm from the Catholic University of Leuven. And uh, I, first of all, I have to thank uh, everyone for organizing this uh, great event. Um, I will talk about shared beliefs on genetic ancestry. I'm a population geneticist, so I'm working on genetic ancestry and genetic genealogy for many years already. But genetic ancestry is nowadays very popular. More than 12 million people have already bought one of the um, one of the DNA genetic test, ancestry test on websites as, as Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, uh, MyHeritage. It's very popular to know how much genes you have from one country or another. Uh, it's quite simple. You just have to spit in a test tube uh, some saliva. Um, and you send it up to some companies in most of the time it's in the U.S. And after a few weeks, you get some results, how much Scandinavian DNA you have, uh, Finnish DNA, and even Neanderthal DNA. It's all based on, on the evidence, on the genetic evidence, that there is genetic differentiation between populations. Um, but the problem is that most variation is among the individuals within a population and not between populations or um, uh, in comparison with each other. And that's why those tests are not that accurate. If I test myself in several of those companies, one uh, time it's in, uh, they say that my, uh, I have Scandinavian uh, ancestors in my heritage. They are all coming from England, they say. And in 23andMe, I have even African DNA. So quite uh, an impressive, especially because I know that all my ancestors uh, in my whole genealogy till the 17th century are all coming from one particular region in Belgium. And so it's quite funny if you read then those results that I show you here of 23andMe from a, a couple of weeks ago. They did a huge update, so I thought maybe they will give me, me some better results. Well, they say that my ancestors were British uh, in, the, in 1900, uh, French and G German and Scandinavian in the 18th and 19th century. So that's not uh, what it looks like in my real genealogy. Uh, so you, the, the results are not that accurate. And uh, unfortunately, their relatedness tests are quite accurate. And you have a lot of privacy issues with those kind of tests. If you find out that you have a half-brother or a secret adoption, hidden affair, uh, there is a lot of privacy issues going on. And an ancestry test is often not more or less than a paternity test. A second uh, problem is that the business, business models of those companies, especially 23andMe, is uh, based on the fact that they will sell your genetic data to pharma companies and to biotech companies. And so you are not only the customer, but you are also the product. And there are already a lot of problems with those uh, ancestry testing data um, it can be so stolen, it can be sold. Also, the police is trying to figure out if, if, there is, uh, if there is a criminal in your family. So there is a lot of problems. And my question is always, why won't people know this kind of uh, information? Or it's even more genetic astrology than genetic uh, ancestry. But it's so... Uh, within uh, our soul that we want to know what is, um, where are my ancestors coming from? Are there other origins in my body? And I do already research for already more than 10 years here in Belgium and in the Netherlands. And when I ask them, uh, what do you expect from your genetic test? They always refer to Spanish DNA. Uh, they always referred that uh, in their family, uh, it's always said that there are uh, Spanish genes, uh, that there is a, gen a Spanish ancestry. And when I ask them why, they always refer to these Spanish furies, events in the past in the 16th century in Flanders. To understand this, we have to go back uh, when, till the 16th century when uh, Belgium and the Netherlands, so the low countries, are part of the Spanish reign. 
and with the iconoclastic fury, a rebellion started um, against the politics of the Spanish king, Philip II, and also a, a, a competition or a conflict more between Protestants and Catholics. So, and the tension only increased when the Spanish um, king uh, sent uh, 10,000 soldiers to the Low Countries, to his northern provinces, under command of this person, uh, and that's uh, the Duke of Alba, or better known in our history as Alva. He's really, in our history, the, the representation of devil, but on earth. Um, he's um, very well known in our national history. And uh, one of the things that happened uh, was that there are a huge, uh, that there are different Spanish furies. The most well known in Antwerp, but also in Mechelen, in Aalst, uh, in Maastricht. Um, soldiers uh, were, um, went to some cities and they burned uh, uh, houses, uh, raped uh, women and killed a lot of people. But there are no neutral observance at that time, so we don't know how much uh, people died or how much houses burned. And so the estimations are fluctuating between uh, sources. But the most important thing is that it's so in our national history, we all know it uh, from our historical lessons in, in, uh, when we at, were at school, that a lot of people are really thinking that it's also in our blood, that there is a signature, a genetic signature of this Spanish period, and especially from this Spanish furies in several cities here in Belgium and the Netherlands. So what I did was, finding evidence for this. Is there really some persons? Because a lot of people always uh, say to me, yeah, but we definitely have some Spanish genes here in the population because there are a lot of people with black hair or in my family we have a, a, a darker skin color or, uh, or pronoun pronounced eyebrows. So I don't see it here, but a lot of people say it that oh, definitely in our family there is Spanish uh, genes. So I really want to check it. Um, but on the percentage of light eyes, you don't see any difference in the Netherlands or in Belgium. Also not for uh, light hair, there is also no difference. Or in pigmentation. Um, there is absolutely no difference uh, b with, between Belgium and the Netherlands and uh, the surrounding uh, populations. This is a genomic analysis of all people from Europe. The colors represent people um, on the geographical map. So these are genetic, uh, 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 and, uh, pat um, genetic pattern. Uh, all these dots are persons from, for example, this cluster is all people from Italy. This is from the Iberian Peninsula, uh, Ireland and Great Britain. Well, Bel Belgium, oh. so Belgium and the Netherlands are just um, between their nearby countries. So genetically, you cannot expect something special for these uh, regions. It's just a mirror of the geographical map. Another thing we, we uh, looked for, um, Ah, okay, now, um, what we found out was that there was also no signal of admixture. So what we do now in population genetics is compare, compare people of different populations and see if there was admixture between them in the past. For example, for the uh, Spanish genes, you see them increasing uh, in the Maya population, and we can even date uh, this, um, this admixture event. But for the low countries and Spain, we didn't find any evidence. And that's why also um, look, uh, are very curious to see if there is a genetic pattern uh, on graveyards, like this one in Eindhoven, in the southern part of the Netherlands. Uh, people are really interested if you see some genetic differentiation within time, um, so be before and after the Spanish Wars, but we don't see any special difference between those periods. So there was absolutely no evidence at all. But a lot of people from those cities, main cities, where you had the Spanish Furies, um, they still believe that 
very locally there will be some genetic genes going on in the population, like in Antwerp, in Mechelen. To, to uh, study this very local um, um, pattern, um, this paper came out one year and a half uh, of our colleagues uh, from Barcelona. They did an, uh, a research on Y chromosomes. That Y chromosome is very specific chromosome. Um, they found out that some variation is very locally um, distributed in the Iberian Peninsula. The Y chromosome is linked to the paternal line. We get each Y chromosome from our father, our, his father, and so on. It's coupled with paternal lineage and also with the surname. There is a lot of variation on the Y chromosome. Like I said, you can uh, have different lineages which we can plot on a map. And what our colleagues in Barcelona find out was that there are definitely some lineages very specifically for the Iberian Peninsula. Um, and for Flanders and the Netherlands, we can, we can reconstruct the Y chromosomal variation of, uh, in specific time periods. Because if you have the Y chromosome of a donor who lives today, based on his genealogy, you can definitely uh, say uh, where that uh, Y chromosomal variant was um, uh, located uh, so many years ago, uh, a few um, centuries ago. Um, this is a, ge a, a, a legal genealogy. It's always possible that there will be some uh, extra pair paternity. Um, so what we did also in our test was comp uh, compare people uh, with the same known common pattern ancestor to see what is the event or what is the frequency of an extra pair paternity event. We did some research on that and we saw that uh, cuckold uh, fathers are quite rare in human populations and that we actually can very uh, use, uh, use these um, genealogies compared with the Y chromosome very well. And so we, we could do a lot of research uh, on the black, on the, um, on the sp Spanish Furies and to see if there is a pattern at that time in that particular cities. So we, we looked up in all old records of the 16th and 17th century what kind of surnames were uh, in, in these uh, cities which has uh, had a, a Spanish Fury. And uh, what we find out is that um, we took some saliva and we tested the markers that our colleagues of Barcelona uh, uh, studied and found out that it was very specific for the Iberian Peninsula. What we found was that you see the patterns of these uh, genes or, or the y -chrom a genetic variation on the Y chromosome that the most of the diversity is here, uh, or the frequency is here on, on the Iberian Peninsula, but when you go northwards, uh, you don't see uh, a lot of those uh, variants anymore, especially not in Flanders and in the Netherlands, and also in those small particular um, cities like Antwerp, like Mechelen, like Aals, where they really believe that they have particular uh, Spanish DNA, we don't see any of those Spanish Y chromosomes in the population. So what, what, what happened then at, at the 16th century? Well, in the first place, we, it was really not so surprising that we didn't find Spanish genes in Flanders or in the Netherlands, because those armies of the Spanish uh, of, of, of Alva, for example, uh, with 10,000 soldiers, well, m most of them were not from Spain at all. They were from Germany, they were from Italy, they were from even from our region here. So it would be very special if we found some Spanish genes. So it's also um, because of uh, the, the, the bad stereotype that we gave to the Spanish uh, soldiers. And this is why we call our paper uh, the Black Legend and the, and, and the Netherlands or the low, in the Low Countries because uh, in the past at that moment the opponents used a very bad stereotype of the Spanish soldiers and you can read a lot of books about uh, that you don't trust you cannot trust uh, your wife with a Spanish uh, person. Uh, there were pamphlets, there were uh, theater plays, there were even like these paintings where you really see a lot of um, too much 
of, <laughs> of uh, cruelty. And uh, there are a lot of studies where they say that depictions of sexual violence and Spanish tyranny was, uh, um, was used to fostering identity in the new Dutch Republic uh, of, in the 17th century. So they used the picture of um, a, a sexual violence and all this, uh, the, the, the history of the Spanish tyr tyr tyranny as a way to have an identity in the new uh, Republic. Also, later in, uh, so you have also a lot of theater plays like this one from Hoft, where you have that the Dutch wife is attacked by the Spanish, and this created a stereotype that we are all uh, and, uh, descendants of Spanish soldiers at that time. And even in my uh, youth, I, I read a lot of books which are still very popular in the youth, um, like this one of Siska and Whiskey, it's very popular, and it's really that stereotype of the Spanish soldier at that time of the 16th century. I always thought that so, uh, Spanish soldiers were only drinking and playing dice. It's very a stereotype, but that's created uh, also a, a mindset of people and a myth that it's still in our genes. And these myths, the, those legends, are still still used by, um, by those companies like uh, Ancestry DNA and 23andMe as they show you, yeah, don't hesitate to test your DNA. Uh, you never know what to find out. Uh, and you, we had a, a lot of uh, immigrants here in Belgium and in the Netherlands, so you never know if you have Spanish uh, ancestors. And you can even have a reduced price because of the World Cup to see if you have maybe Belgian DNA, uh, I don't know, but it's a whole commercial business, of course, and they, uh, they take advantage of all these myths in family history and in populations. I have a lot of co-authors in Belgium. I have uh, a historian, Violet Soon, who helped me a lot, and also some uh, uh, colleagues from Barcelona, and I have to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you.